So I'll be the first to admit that constellations and nebula, they never look like what they're supposed to to look like, right? Or the name says they should look like. It's like the ancient Greeks had never seen a real fish, or even a real woman for that matter. But this is the Christmas tree cluster, and it actually does look like a Christmas tree. Everything from the real life star at the very, very tippity top, through the triangle structure, all the way down, making it like a tree in the trunk at the bottom. But I know that all of you at home will be sat there thinking, but Becky, Christmas trees are green. So why is this Christmas tree pink? Now it's coming round to my favourite time of year. I'm a veritable little tiny Tim at Christmas. So I figured it, I had to do at least one Christmas themed video this December. But speaking of Christmas, the eagle eyed among you might have noticed my t-shirt. <laughs> That's right, I finally have merch. <laughs> There are three different designs which you can get on a range of different items for adults, kids, toddlers, everything. You've got the Galaxy In Her Eyes classic Dr. Becky logo that I'm wearing. It's honestly absolutely stunning. You've got the blooper tee. Space is hard. Words are harder. Never a truer statement on this channel. And my favourite, favourite, favourite t-shirt the toenail moon tea. The moon for which has been designed in um, a pointillism style or a dot art, which looks really cool when it's printed. Honestly, I love wearing this tea. Now, all of these t-shirts have been designed by my sister, Megan. She's a fabulous artist and graphic designer. In fact, the toenail moon on the toenail moon tea, it actually comes from a piece of art that I commissioned from her for my living room. It's so beautiful. It's the phases of the moon. If you like it as much as I do, you can also get that from her Etsy store, which I'll link in the description below. If I'm being completely honest with you lot here, I feel so weird and awkward like launching a merch line as a scientist you know I, I've spoken before on this channel about how I'm very careful with what sponsorships I take because I'm very aware that you know as a scientist I have this trusted role in society to to always speak the truth and always tell you like it is and then also communicate with you you know what we've been finding from the research that we've been doing you know that's funded by you the taxpayers so it then feels really strange to me to be then like oh, okay now go buy my merch but at the end of the day, I mean, so many of you over the past two years have reached out to me asking if I have a Patreon you can contribute to or memberships on YouTube channel. Now, usually that comes with extra content and I just don't have time to make that with the research I'm doing as well as YouTube. And I'd feel so wrong taking it without any sort of thing to give back. So this way I figured you get something tangible in return. And the main reason I'm doing this is for my sister. She is a recent graphic design graduate who had a job finally lined up after graduating. She you was know, searching for like nine months and then that job got took away from her because of the pandemic. And I'm just so proud of the way that she's, you know, just picked herself up. She set up her own business and she started selling stuff on Etsy. So the majority of the profits from the sales of my merch are actually going to my sister Megan to help support her through the pandemic. So know that yes, you're supporting me and my channel by buying this, but you're also supporting a local business owner in the UK as well. So it's all good. <laughs> and now we can get back to the science. All right, so the Christmas tree cluster is a big open star cluster, part of a larger nebula called NGC 2264. That's all that sort of pink gas behind the stars. And the bigger complex of NGC 2264 also contains the co-nebula, the snowflake cluster, and also the fox fur nebula as well. So it's just a little wintry theme all around really. This image is a region of the sky about 30 light years across, and it's about 2,600 light years away in our galaxy, the Milky Way. And if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and you've got binoculars or a telescope or a good camera, you should be able to spot this thing because it's really, really bright. And it's a lovely thing to look out for, you know, mid-December when the nights are long and it's getting towards Christmas. It's just up and across from Orion. So if you find Orion's belt and you go up from there to the red star Betelgeuse in the top left, you've then got Bellatrix opposite it in the top right of Orion. If you draw a line between those two stars and follow that line so that about the same distance past them again, 
And that's where you will find the Christmas tree star cluster. So that's where you should point your telescope or your binoculars or your camera if you want to try out some astrophotography maybe as well. If you do, send them to me on social media because I always want to see that. And keep an eye out on my socials too because I'm going to try and spot this throughout December, you know, when I got a bit more time off work and uh, I'll post it there if I manage it. If you do manage to spot it, you'll be following in the footsteps of William Herschel himself, who first recorded the position of the star cluster back in 1784, and then two years later recorded that it had that sort of, you know, gas cloud behind it, that nebula, actually at Christmas time as well. So perfect little story for Christmas. Now, along with the cutesy connection to Christmas, the Christmas tree cluster and NGC 2264 as a whole are really important scientifically, especially in our understanding of young stars and how they form and what their properties are with this huge slew of scientific papers written about NGC 2264 on this topic over the years. Now, all that work might seem a little bit niche to some, like focusing so much on just the young stars in this one cluster, like what's, what's the big picture on? But it's actually really important to understand, you know, when we have a cloud of gas like this, how much light do the newborn stars give off? How much light does dust in that nebula block? And also just how many stars of each mass will you form? So the distribution of the different types of stars you form out of a cloud of gas, what is that? Because that, all of that information feeds into our big picture models of, you know, what's the amount of light that we're getting from a collection of stars. So light in an entire galaxy, which is a collection of what, like a billion, if not a hundred billion stars in some cases, right? We want to be able to say, okay, from how much light we're receiving from this galaxy, i.e. how bright we've observed it to be, how many stars does that mean are there? And therefore, you know, how much mass in stars is there? You know, how much does the galaxy weigh, if you will? And that's so important to know because we want to compare that to our measurements of the total mass, the amount of mass that gravity says is there. So from the influence of that galaxy on all the things around it, we can work out how much mass is there in, okay, not just stars, but gas and dust and maybe black holes and all the other things we can't see, like dark matter. But we have to know really well how much we can convert sort of light to mass in stars by studying things like the Christmas tree cluster that tell us, you know, how much light do newborn stars give off, which tend to be the brightest. So it's funny how only by studying things like this can we make confident cosmological statements about how much dark matter there is in our universe. Like, I love that about astrophysics that, you know, just from asking, you know, how bright are those newborn stars? Do you end up making a statement about dark matter? Like, it all just interlinks eventually. It's all connected. But the big question on all the Christmas tree aficionados' lips is why is this Christmas tree pink and not green like you would expect the Christmas tree to be? So this kind of nebula where stars are forming has a lot of hydrogen gas in it. Hydrogen gas is star formation fuel after all. And when the UV light from these brand new stars that have formed hits that hydrogen, it causes the electrons orbiting the nucleus in some of these hydrogen atoms to jump up to orbit in another energy level. There's only actually certain amounts of energies that an electron can have that would sort of put it in a happy orbit around the center of a nucleus in an atom. That's essentially what quantum mechanics tells us. So the orbits of electrons are always separated by a very, very specific amount of energy that never changes within a specific element. Which means that when the electron eventually drops back down to where it should be, it actually gives out energy in the form of light. It's always the same amount of energy and therefore it's always the same wavelength or color of light. For hydrogen, that wavelength is 656.28 nanometers or 0.6 micrometers, whichever you prefer. And the color of that wavelength is red, as you probably guessed by now. So what we can do when we take images of nebula like this that we know contain lots of hydrogen gas is we can take them through a filter that only lets in that specific wavelength or color of light. And then we get all of the detail of where all of the gas is that's giving out that light. It means that detail doesn't get lost 
to all of the background light or the background glow of the stars that are nearby it. We can then color that image that's taken through that special filter, the color that we know it's supposed to be, the color of that wavelength of light, which in hydrogen's case, this is a very pretty reddish, pink color and so we layer it on top of the more generic image we have of the stars and we can see both of those things then the light from the stars and the light from the gas as well and so that my friends is how we end up not with a classic green christmas tree but with an even more spectacular quantum hydrogen pink christmas tree could you just not go to sleep right now why do you just keep going to sleep, computer? I want the pretty picture. Now, along with the Christmas connection, the Christmas tree cluster and the NGC 2264. You think I'd remember that by now? I've said it so many times. Like in an entire, like in an entire, in an, ah, in an entire, I-A-N.